Welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is what? My name is who? My name is it's name Sadie. How about that for this week? That's a pretty good one, isn't it? If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Every week on this podcast, I start the show with like, welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is, and then I do a different name every week. Kind of like I've likened it in the past to like the chalkboard gag in The Simpsons. You know, just a little fun little bonus thing that changes every week at the start that you're like, oh, that was cool. Now I'm feeling the pod. Now I'm into it. Now I'm in. And if you're new, that's your first version of that. They used to be predominantly RM theme. So it was like, because my name is Radio Mike, BT Dubs. So that it'd be like, oh, my name is Radioactive Meshuganah, right? Then for a while I was doing just like something oh something because of Radio Mike. So it's like, oh, my name is uh, Biggie O Dick. I don't, that's, I've never done that one. But anyway, that's the vibe. Now I'm thinking of, well, you can always submit them, by the way. Listener submissions, always welcome. Now I'm thinking of doing... Other ones, like, yeah, my name is Chicka Chicka. It's name Sadie. So there's something. There's something. That, welcome to the podcast. I'm going to stop ranting because I'm certainly ranting a lot. But uh, this is this podcast is called 20th Century Boy. It is a podcast about me, Radio Mikey, young writer and producer from here in Melbourne, Australia, just trying to make, he, try to make his way through life. Sometimes it's easier than other times. At the, at the moment, I'm loving life. Life is, life is swell. This podcast is a weekly one-hour conversation, a one-sided conversation, that is, between you and me. You can't respond, but it's a one-sided conversation. Hang out with me once a week for just under an hour and have the conversations that you wish you were having. That's what this podcast is all about. The conversations you wish you were having, but you're not, so you're listening to this podcast to get your fix of these conversations, because I guarantee you, you won't have conversations like this anywhere else. Lots and lots happening, but of course the obligatory plugs at the top of the show. Uh, Patreon.com slash Radio Mike is the best way for you to support me and this show. The show costs me money to produce. I also have the legendary Pat, producer Pat, who produces this podcast, who gets paid. We don't ask him to work for free. Um, We could. He probably would. No, he definitely wouldn't. So if you like this podcast and you listen every week and you think it's worth a dollar a month, patreon.com slash radio mic. If you don't want to do Patreon, you just want to make a one-off donation, paypal.me slash it's radio mic. Send me 12 bucks. That's a year. A dollar a month is 12 bucks a year. That's three coffees a year. If you'd get coffee with me three times a year, you totally would. You would love to hang out with me. Be honest. You know you would. Um, Jump on the Patreon. You get access to the overflow, the TCB overflow, which is up at the exact same time as this. As soon as you finish this, go and listen to the overflow where I just talk about other stuff that I wouldn't talk about on this pod. Um, I will plug that in a sec, as well as the Pat and Mike show where me and Pat talk about behind the scenes of this show. Brand new Patreon just jumped on today. Patreo, Abby, I, oh, I'm going to screw up your surname. Abby Srinv- Srinivasan. Welcome, Patreo Abby. Thank you for joining on the $4.50 tier, you get access to the back catalogue of Overflows, the back catalogue of Pat and Mike's. What a great thing to be a part of. Really appreciate all the support. We now have 52 patrons. Let's get to 60. Let's get to 60. Jump on $12 a year, $1 a month. You won't even notice it coming out of your account at the end of the day. You literally won't. And it would go such a long way for me. Um, of course, you can join up at, at a higher tier as well if you have more money. But yeah, um, this week on the overflow, which is up now, exclusive to Patreon, uh, I'm telling the story about how I nearly got kidnapped by an Uber driver. I w- I teased this a while ago, but I totally forgot to say it. So I'm telling that story on the Patreon. You will hear things about me that you didn't know that you never w- you never will find out. Only Patreons will get access to that. It's actually quite a funny story if I do say so myself. So jump on the Patreon to get access to that. There'll be a Pat and Mike later on in the week as well. Would love to see you there. The Patreon is overflowing with content. Guys, we haven't done one of these for a while. This was a mainstay of the podcast for a while. A few people have said that they missed it. So it's time for this. Uh, 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 uh.
It's trivia question of the week where I just ask a pop culture trivia question and you answer the question by calling the podcast hotline. Haven't played this for a while either. If you've got a contribution to the podcast, there's only one number you see. Go on it, That's right, it's 1-800-438-353. Call up, leave your answer. First person to answer correctly or most correct wins. They are hard. This is a harder one. Actually, I don't think it's that hard. I think a lot of people will know this. Um, but, you know, here's the trivia question of the week. Call up, leave your answer. Here it is. If you listen to the the overflow, you'll probably know the answer to this straight away. But uh, if you don't, you might have to think about it. Here it is. The villain of which horror movie franchise shares a surname with a zany character from the sitcom Seinfeld. I'll say it again. The villain of which horror movie franchise shares a surname with a zany character from the sitcom Seinfeld? That is a great trivia question. So there's a character in Seinfeld that has the same surname as the villain in a major horror movie franchise. And what I like about this question is you kind of have to think about two things. So what I would do is I go, okay, what are the surnames of all the main characters in Seinfeld, right? And then I'd go, okay, are any of those horror villains? And then I guess if you don't know, you're kind of stuck from there. But then you probably will know this one. Another great one that I've asked, I don't think I asked it on this pod, but I really like this trivia question. Maybe answer for this as well. Um, The, it's another horror villain one. The main villain of a horror movie franchise, a different one, shares a very similar name to the voice actor who voices Shrek. What is that villain's name? So that's another good one because you're like, okay, Shrek, voice actor who plays Shrek. Yep, I remember that, that person's name. It's a very similar name to that person. What is that character's name? And you could kind of guess it from there. So there's two trivia questions this week, both around horror movies, which of course is my favourite genre of movie, if you've listened to this podcast for a while. Guys, it's been really fun. Again, it's still comedy festival here in Melbourne, so it's been great getting out and about in Melbourne. I went to see Becky Lucas's show in the city earlier in the week. She was great. I've never seen her before, but obviously I've seen her on TV heaps. Um, Her show was really funny. It was really great. I had a really good time and um, some really funny stories from her. And then a few nights later with a friend of the show, Keelan, I went to see another friend of the show's show, Ruben Solo. Gotta say, so Ruben, as you, if you know him, Ruben worked on the Luke and Lewis show, which is also where I started kind of working years before him and um, got really big on TikTok and Instagram doing these really funny sketches, very quick sketches, hilarious sketches. And um, did his debut comedy show at the festival. I'm going to put it out there. One of the best shows I've ever seen. Like hilarious. I genuinely thought, and and Ruben's like, he's got a really particular style of comedy. Um, It's very like dry. It's very, um, it, it, um, it like defies what you're expecting. And, yeah, it was just a really fun, really well-planned out show with lots of great callbacks. I really enjoyed it. So if you're in Melbourne, you know, I've, I've plugged a bunch of my friends' show, but Ruben's is another one that I highly recommend you go to. And it's awesome seeing him, like, just explode and now doing comedy festival shows and they're so strong and just, I don't know, so many funny bits um, that were awesome. And I'm hoping to get him back on the podcast. So, yeah. Had a really good time at the uh, at the Comedy Fest seeing those guys. Uh, a couple listener feedback things. Uh, first of all, Radio the Batman. Welcome to the Radio family, of course. Uh, this was actually in the Hey Mish and Andy subreddit, which I sometimes venture onto, but try not to. Um, but I saw this comment and this uh, it's because this guy tagged my Reddit account in the comment. So I got a notification and it says... On a side note, Mike, if you do see this, your Harry Potter podcast is consistently cracking me and my wife up. We are just wrapping up book one. Um, and then he, and then a few people on the subreddit are like, what's his Harry Potter podcast? It's Harry Potter and the boys. It is, 
Harry Potter and the Boys is getting more and more popular. I would really encourage you to go and listen to it because it is, I love it. I think it's so funny. Um, um, Again, it's my podcast, but yeah, I really like it. Thank you, Radio the Batman. Radio Steve McKee. Now, last week on the show, we, of course, talked about the Eminem uh, to Trailer Park Girls Go Round the Outside reference. We did get to the bottom of that, but Radio Steve McKee, he goes, um, hey, dude, love your work. Don't want to comment on the video, as in the podcast video, because I'm not 100% sure about this. But I'm pretty sure I remember hearing two Trailer Park Girls Go Round the Outside means giving a rim job. Hope this helps. Ha ha ha. And that is a fascinating theory that I didn't research. As we learned in last week's episode of the pod, research is not in the spirit of the show, um, which I actually disagree with. But anyway, um, of, of course, rim job. We all know what that is. Some of us might not. We all know what it is. Uh, someone, if you could do some research on that, that'd be great. Radio Koala. Loving all your guys' little pen names, by the way. Uh, I just finished listening to this week's episode of the Hamish and Andy podcast, and once again, you killed it. I always look forward to seeing you feature on that pod, and I'm keen to see you on it again. I kind of wish you had your own mic all the time like Jack. That would be awesome. Yeah, I was on the H&A podcast uh, again, which I will actually get to a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, another one from Radio Jesse who was a former choir chum of mine who listens to the Hamish and Andy pod said, I can't believe how much airtime the choir is getting. Unbelievable. Need a spin-off podcast. Amazing. Um, and Radio Josh Halford. More feedback. Welcome. Uh, hey, Mike. Listening to the What the Hell is the Deal with My Choir Scholarship episode of your podcast. It's my second episode of the podcast and I'm loving it so far. Great. He started at a recent episode. I always say, do not start at season one. Start maybe at season, not season two. Just start at season three. I don't remember anything about season two. I don't know. People, let me know you. What are some great moments from season two of the podcast? Because I have no idea. Um, uh, I've listened to the Hamish and Andy podcast for a while and always love when you pop in. And the episode you did in place with Jack of Jack was great. Decided to follow you on Insta and discovered your podcast. Keep up the good work, mate. Thank you. And... A message from our uh, Denver listener, Radio Ryan Adams. Welcome to the radio family. Our 48-year-old man from Denver, Colorado. Awesome. Denver sucks ass. Sorry about that. Uh, radio Mike, as your number one Denver super fan, I thought it would be would I thought I would do some research for you. Last week on the show, I was saying that I wasn't sure if South Park was a real town because I was talking about this moment from South Park Denver sucks ass. which a lot of people found funny because I was making fun of Ryan who's from Denver um and I and I said it wasn't a real town but here we go I thought I'd do some research for you in not in the spirit of the show Ryan but thank you South Park is a real town in Colorado they make it seem like it's more a suburb of Denver but it's really up in the mountains which makes sense because it's like a snowy mountain town in the show More importantly, Casa Bonita from Season 7, Episode 11. Uh, If you're not familiar, Casa Bonita, classic South Park episode where they go to a Mexican restaurant called Casa Bonita, uh, is a real restaurant. I used to know a bunch of the cliff divers because, again, if you're not familiar with the episode, there's like a waterfall and you can dive over the... Anyway, watch the episode. When I win the podcast, I'll take you for a celebratory dinner. Eminem is from Detroit, Michigan, which is pretty far from Denver and not really like Missouri. They made a whole movie about it called Eight Mile. Maybe that movie didn't make it to Australia. Denver does suck a little ass. <laughs> um, and no, uh, just on that note, and... Uh, Denver sucks ass. Thanks again. I'm going to play that every time you write in. Eight Mile did make it to Australia. Um, and I've seen it. It's an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, you know, there's a lot of talk recently about these music biopics, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, Rocket Man, Elton John, uh, the Elvis one that's coming out. But I'm sorry, literally like 20 years before any of them did a biopic, Eminem literally, I think, st- like maybe, no, didn't pro- maybe produce, Eminem starred in a biopic about himself and his life, and it is a really good movie. It is honestly quite a fantastic movie uh, where he p- plays like a semi-autobiographical 
version of himself. We talk about Eminem a lot on this podcast. I don't know why. He plays like a version of himself. Um, it's basically his life story. It's a very interesting movie to learn more about Eminem. And the character he plays is is it's not his name isn't isn't Eminem. It's a a, a white rapper called B Rabbit, right? And one thing about this is the song Lose Yourself, one of Eminem's biggest songs, of course, um, that was never on one of Eminem's albums. It was the the lead song of that movie. So that was from the 8 Mile soundtrack. Great movie. Definitely watch it. And one thing I do notice about people, this just shows how nerdy I am about pop culture. Often when I hear people singing the song Lose Yourself and there's the bit, the classic bit in the first verse where it's like, Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes, um, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, and then a lot of people who clearly have not seen the movie 8 Mile and don't know the story of that movie and don't know anything about Eminem, loser alert. Denver sucks ass. They sing it as snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, there goes gravity. So they just say, oh, there goes gravity twice which is a rhyme crime. But us people who actually know the movie 8 Mile know that he is in fact saying, snap back to reality, oh, there goes gravity, oh, there goes rabbit, he, in reference to the character B Rabbit, the character that Eminem plays in 8 Mile. Here's, here it is for you. Snap back to reality, oh, there goes gravity, oh, there goes rabbit, he choke. He's so mad, but he won't give up that, is he? No, he won't have it, he's not. Anyway, you guys have seen it. Or maybe you don't. But that maybe maybe there are people listening like, oh, I never knew that. I always thought it was just gravity twice. That's a rhyme crime. We've talked about them on the show before. It's gravity, rabbit, he. Oh, there goes rabbit, comma. He choked. He's so mad, but he won't give up. The- anyway, little lesson for you all. Um, and of course, one from Radio Jaden. Welcome to the RF. Listening to the latest TCB and Kanye did the Beyonce thing. That's when Kanye stood up and was like, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best music videos of all time, of all time. I said, I thought it was at the Grammys, but he said it was at the MTV Music Awards, not the Grammys, Grammys, which makes it even sadder. That is much sadder. Thank you for writing in everyone. You can always write in radiomikepod at gmail.com, radio.mike on Instagram Contact form at radiomike.com.au. Comment on the YouTube videos of these podcasts. Whatever you want, guys. Whatever. I love getting in touch. 1-800-438-353. Get in touch with me. I want to hear from you. Don't be anxious. I want to hear from you guys. I have a contender now based on one of the most recent episodes of the second most viral thing I've ever done online. And that is me explaining the Phenomenon. Um, If you're not familiar with the Phenomenon, I'm going to... I'm going to recap you with the with the video that has now gone viral on TikTok. Every single person in Australia has an uncle named John. If you don't have an uncle John, then it is highly likely that either you or your grandfather are named John. And if neither of those apply, then it is almost certain that your dad's name is John. If the phenomenon John applies to you, leave a comment saying John belongs. And when I say viral, you know, I'm not a super viral guy, but for me, this is viral. It's got 340,000 views at time of recording, nearly 40,000 likes and 6,000 comments. Second only to the Harry Potter and the Boys clip that's gotten 455,000 views and 116,000 likes on TikTok with me and Sam Garlip, an absolute classic moment. Um, this is the, the phenomenon is now the second most viral thing I've ever done. And you know what? We put so much effort, me and Pat, particularly Pat on making clips, you know, cutting edge pop culture clips that are relevant. For example, me, I don't know, me talking about the Batman movie, you know, gets 8,000 views. And then I literally make up a fucking stupid theory about how everyone has an uncle called John and called it the phenomenon. And it get it becomes the second biggest thing I've ever done. Three hundred forty thousand views. How does TikTok work? I don't understand how TikTok works. I really, really don't. And what I hate about TikTok is so many people on TikTok are so stupid. Like I just, I'm sorry if you're on TikTok, but you might be stupid. Like the amount of people commenting, being like, "No, this is wrong. I don't have an uncle called John, mate." 
Here's a newsflash for all of you. I don't either. The phenomenon doesn't even apply to me. It's a joke. It's like a funny observation. Like the top comment is, this isn't true. As if like I'm genuinely presenting the fact as if it's a factual thing. Like a very, it's clearly a, a funny concept that is generally like relatable to people. Anyway, people on TikTok, they take everything so literally as well. Like they don't understand metaphor or analogy. Like everything you say, they see it as so literal. But I just, you know, you just got to move on in your life. Of course, as I mentioned at the start of the show, there is a big update on my uh, choir scholarship. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this. I think people maybe don't have necessarily the the right idea of what kind of choir it was because like there was the school choir, but then the cathedral choir, which was the scholarship where you sung at at St. Patrick's Cathedral Sunday Mass, you know, the Catholic Church. It, it was, mu- I've got a grab of like a song we used to sing that I remember like every part of it. Like it's music like this. It's like Catholic God worshipping God music. Th- this is an example of something we would sing. <laughs> So we're talking like every Sunday singing multiple songs like that at an hour and a half mass, you know, being conducted, wearing choir robes, you know, like all of that. The lyrics to that song, that's Latin. The lyrics are Lord have mercy. How up, that's way too upbeat. That's them saying, Lord have mercy. God, the Catholic church is so weird. They're singing an upbeat Latin song where they're saying, Lord, have mercy. And it's like, "Eh, having fun. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to give, like, I think people think it's just like us singing, like, you know, some random school choir song. No, like we're singing like legit Latin fucking music and German music and Mozart and Bach and Mendel, whoever, whoever they are. I don't even know. Um, Now, Sammy Garlep, friend of the show, a few people didn't realise it was him. He's a friend of the show. He emailed Andy because he knows Andy through working on The 100 as well. And um, he said, hey, I was also in the school choir, but I didn't have a scholarship. And Andy got him on the show. He got on the show and trashed me, absolutely trashed me, called me arrogant, you know, an absolute trashing. And then I came back with a true story. Here's what I said. You've probably heard it. Uh, Mike, any comment any of that? Well, Sam, I'm not sure if you remember this, but probably about 10 years ago, you returned to the school as a graduate to sing in the graduates ensemble. (laughs) You sung a solo in the song. What was the song? Angels by Robbie Williams. And, And you sung... Oh, she offers me protection. That was you. And nice I pitch. came up to you that day. I was in year 12 and I said, hey, man, you were awesome today. And that's coming from a scholarship choir boy. That must have meant the world to you. <laughs> and you come on this show and you trash me in my workplace. I can't believe that. And I retract my comment from 10 oh, years ago. No. <laughs> you did a terrible job. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, if we started with the suspicion that ha- there is hate within the chums, <laughs> it has been proved. If there are any <laughs> other quiet chum stories out there, please come forward. And look, I think it was important that I put that out there on the record so Sam can't come into my workplace and trust me. Now, during the week, I was at my parents' house. Every time I'm at my folks' house, I go through um, photo albums because like my parents just have so many photos from back in the day. And I found this great photo. I'm not going to post it, but it's a photo of Sam said on the Hamish and Andy show that 10 boys got in for the scholarship. Like he auditioned, he didn't get it. 10 boys did. And he was 11th. I found a photo. One of those boys was my older brother, Dan. I found a photo of the boys that got the scholarship in their choir robes in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral in 2003 and I sent it to Sam he there's only seven boys not 10 um and I said to Sam hey these are the boys that beat you at getting a scholarship what do you reckon 
I'm going to call him now and just, just kind of tease him a bit about this and show him all these boys that are clearly better singing singers than him. Just see what he has to say. It's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. Hello, Hamora. Sam, Mike from the show. How are you? Mike from the show. Sorry, Mike my, Goldstein. From, from my show. From my show. 20th Century Boy. <laughs> oh, I thought this was American comedian Mike Goldstein. No. Hey, I just wanted to quickly chat with you about our little, you know, our little disagreement we had on the Hey Mission and Andy podcast oh, last yeah. week. So just in general, or is this, is this on the podcast? This is on the podcast. This is on the podcast. You know, you, you should really start with this call being recorded for this, this training call, purposes. Yeah, it's being recorded for training and broadcast purposes. <laughs> I sent you a photo last night that I pulled from the archives of my mum and dad's place of oh. the group of boys in your year level who did get a yeah. choir scholarship that you auditioned for and didn't get. I can name every freaking one of those kids. Name and them. I'll bleep, them le- I'll, I'll bleep the surnames. Name them. <laughs> when you when you name them, I also want you to to give a number out of ten as to how mu- how jealous you are of them because they got a scholarship, and give a little description. Yeah. Okay, so go left sure. to right. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, no, I need, I'm getting. I'm just getting this photo up. This is great podcasting. Okay, here we go. Chris, right, that's about a ten. Cause he was shocking. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, I cannot believe when I saw this photo I was the first guy I was like it cannot have been him I'm, like, s- I'm actually pretty good friends with his younger brothers so that, and I think they listen to this podcast in fact his brother Tim is a <laughs> Patreon so they will hear this. <laughs> this this will get back to him next <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I feel like he was a jock I feel like what was he doing in this in this I think so- group. sometimes a jock just slipped through the slipped through the cracks of the choir and just got in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like he he's tall and everyone. I feel like he, he just threatened to like bash them if they didn't let him in. Like, <laughs> um, the next guy, Dylan. Br- yeah, he left the school after like two years. He and he also briefly dated. Uh, again, friend of the show, <laughs> T-Money. He also briefly dated T-Money's sister. <laughs> so I just, so I, weird. <laughs> yep, next up. Uh, Michael. Well. If anyone who listens to Harry Potter and the Boys, you've spoken about him. I think you're very jealous of him. You didn't like him, did yeah. you? Yeah, <laughs> he was He was the golden boy. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. And he played Jean Valjean in Les Mis in Year 12, and I wanted that part. Mm. All right, front row it's- now. Who's, uh, who Luke, else? Lucas. Yeah, great singer, but was more of a swimmer. And I bumped into him in Japan in 2017 by coincidence. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've really got links. Crazy. I've still got links to all these guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's really like, I haven't seen these guys in 10 years. You're like, yeah, I see them all the time. Can we turn our attention to smack bang in the middle of this photo? Who yeah. is the... There's a very smug-looking boy. Who is that? Well, it looks like you, but I'm assuming it's Dan. It's my brother. it's my brother Dan. And what what do you think of this photo? This is it is the smuggest little grin I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. It is, he is very smug. It's kind of like he's he's like mocking you, like the ghosts of your past are mocking yeah. you through this photo. He, his, his smile is literally, even though it's a closed teeth smile, but he's he's literally doing that face you'd make if you were going na 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 na. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised if they've actually got if on the other side of this camera was me and all the regular choir members that weren't on the scholarship. That's what I was gonna and say. It kind of looks like plot. it's like you were taking the photo, and he was like, "Oh, this guy <laughs> didn't get in. I'm gonna show him. I'm in my choir robes and uh, <laughs> with all the other scholarship boys." Yeah, fascinating yeah, I, stuff. Like, see, I cannot believe you dug this photo up, and it's you know it's funny that I can recognise every single one, and it just yeah really hurts. A couple of them look Chris, great guy, but I mean, <laughs> well, you you say that now that you know he has a connection to the podcast through his brother being a Patreon, but you weren't so exactly. hot about him before you knew that. <laughs> no, but uh, well, I oh will. Uh, thanks for jumping on my show. I'm gonna I'm gonna yep. continue with the pod, well, but. That's what you get. Well, That's what you get—a smug I, photo for mocking me on the show, on the Hamish and Andy show. All right. Well, right. you know, can't wait to be back on the pod again and just with with some gags ready.
All right. See you, Sammy. Sammy. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. There you go. Just wanted to do a little test on Sammy to see if he um he recognised those people. Um, I've got a couple more things that uh, I want to talk about before the show is over today. So stick with me. Um, first of all, well, not well, yeah. First of all, uh, had a few had a moment, a cool moment on social media where Pat made a clip of last week where I likened the Will Smith. Chris Rock slap uh, to Australian performers, uh, Grant, the the Australian game show host Grant Denyer, uh, walking up on stage at the Logies and and slapping comedian Dave Hughes in the face, which would never happen. I posted it on Instagram and tagged Hughesy and Grant Denyer, and Grant Denyer commented on it. <laughs> I, I don't know him. I've never met him. I don't follow him. He doesn't follow me. Grant Denya commented on it. Like, so basically I'm saying, oh, it's kind of like if Grant Denya walked up on stage on the Logies and smacked Husey in the face, um, where, which would never happen. That's what I say. And then Grant Denya's commented on it saying, or would it happen? It, it's quite foreboding. It kind of makes me think that uh, Grant Denya maybe has some unfinished business with Husey and wants to walk up on stage on the Logies and slap him in the face. And if that happens, we called it first. Imagine, like, Grant Daniel, if you see this, it'll be huge for this podcast if you walk up on stage at the next Logies and slap Husey in the face. I assume Husey will be doing something at the Logies. He's always on on TV. So, I don't know, Grant, like, is that what you're implying? Like, that could be a great publicity moment, not only for you and Husey, but also for me. And I think we all need it at the moment, particularly me. Um, you guys seem to be doing pretty well, but I could use a listenership boost. So if it comes out that we called or we curated the Denya on Hughes slap, that would be an amazing moment for this show. So I'd really appreciate it, Grant. That would be amazing. As well as the Grant Denya stuff, um, I uh, last week also talked about the snub invite. Like I didn't get invited to the Fantastic Beast 3 premiere here in Melbourne. Um, I was really disappointed about it. And I did another clip about that on Insta and got everyone to tag Warner Brothers Australia in that post. I then get a message. Um, I can't remember your name. I'm so sorry. I, I'm just going to quickly scroll through my messages and see, is it, is it you? Yes, it is you. Radio Alexander. Welcome to the radio family. He said, cause I was trying to get a contact at Warner Brothers um, to complain to them that I wasn't invited. I originally went to my friend Dave Lee from Dave Lee Down Under, who is a professional and he was invited to the screening. And um, I said, hey, do you have a contact? I want to like give him a call and complain about not being invited as like a joke for my pod. And he was like, very professionally, Dave Lee's like, hey, like, I mean, as much as I like, I don't think he said that, but I think that he, he said like, hey, I don't really want to give the contact out if it could come back to me like being involved with a prank of some sort because like it's really hard to get on these lists and I don't want to like ruin a relationship because it is important to his business. He does like pop culture reviews on YouTube. So it is important to him to maintain good relationships with these people. For me, it's not as much. You saw this with Grilled. I just harassed them until they sponsored me. On that note, Grilled has been very quiet recently. Don't know what's going on there. And there was some interest from a porto. So anyway, uh, Alexander sent me a message. He said, Universal handle the premieres for Warner Brothers films. We are on the list for them. And then I said, can you help me get in touch? He said, yeah, I'll find the email for you. Sends me the email of a woman named Kate who works in publicity at Universal. And like, I guess Alexander does a podcast. I'll give it a shout. It's called Millennial Movie Talk. Um, And I guess he, they talk about movies, but like, and so they're getting into premieres. You know, I'm looking at their Insta. They're at the Secrets of Dumbledore premiere. They're at the Batman premiere. Like they're at everything. And like, guys, I've given you a plug. My podcast, I reckon my podcast is bigger than yours. (laughs) I'm sorry. I think my podcast is probably bigger than yours. So I don't get why I could be wrong. 
And your podcast sounds great, but I don't get why I'm not on the list and you are. So anyway, I, over the weekend, and I'm yet to, uh, I'm yet to get a response to this, but I did send an email over to Kate. It reads, "Hi there, Kate," and I'm trying to flex in this to give me the best, best chance possible. So the subject line, instead of being like, "mailing list?" question mark, I'm, I did, "Hamish and Andy producer reaching out," <laughs> and I, I go, "Hi there, Kate." My name is Mike, and I'm a producer for Hamish and Andy's podcast, as well as several other podcasts. Your email was passed to me by a friend who said you handle screenings for Warner Brothers Films for Press. I am a podcaster with two podcasts, 20th Century Boy and Harry Potter and the Boys, Australia's biggest Harry Potter-themed podcast. Don't know if that's true, but just thought I'd said it. I'd say it. If you know another Harry Potter-themed podcast that's bigger than Harry Potter and the Boys that's Australian, let me know, because I have lied there. Um as well as being on air with Hamish and Andy as Podcast Mike on their podcast, Hamish and Andy and The Remembering Project, two of Australia's most listened to podcasts. I would love to have gone to the premiere of Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore to cover it on my podcast. Alas, I was not invited and had no idea how to get onto the invite list of what appears to be a very exclusive club. I have a decent social following with nearly 6,000 followers on Instagram and over 11,000 on TikTok. I actually did a bit of content on my podcast about Warner Brothers not inviting me to the screening earlier in the week. You can find it here, hyperlink to the clip so she can watch it. All in good fun, of course, but I would genuinely love to be included at any premieres screenings in the future. Hope to hear from you, Mike Liberali, aka Radio Mike slash Podcast Mike. All a bit of fun. I did throw in an, an alas, as Dumbledore is well known for saying alas, so I think that'll show, maybe he just says it once in the first movie. But anyway, I think it'll just show that I'm a big Harry Potter fan and I should have been invited. So hopefully we get some traction here, guys. I will send a follow-up email next week if I don't hear anything. But for now, I think we're looking like we should be invited to these premieres in the future. Denver sucks ass. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's keep an eye on that. Grilled Grilled did say that they wanted to work with me a lot in 2022 and they're excited about what we can cook up in 2022. So far, nothing from Grilled. What's going on, Grilled? Are you launching any new products? Anything you want me to spruik? Let me know. I'll do something with it. I actually had Grilled um, the other week, but I'm not going to tell say what I ordered or whether I liked it because at the moment, Grilled are not doing anything with me. Uh, I've got three more quick things to talk about before we wrap on the show today. Firstly, one of my favourite bands is uh, coming to an end. And I just wanted to talk about this. The band's name is Columbus. They are originally from Brisbane and they are like an Australian punk rock band and they're awesome. I actually had the lead singer, Alex Moses, on my podcast a few months ago, maybe before New Year's. um, And I have loved their music for a long time. Listen to the Mike Talks with Alex Moses if you want to hear how much it's meant to me. But you know, small punk band from Australia with a cult following. I've never seen them live, but I've loved their music for a long time. Here's a here's a grab of probably one of their most well-known songs. So, you know, just a, a punk kind of... Uh, like if you're into like old school pop punk and stuff, you'll love their music. Their debut album, Spring Forever, is one of my favourite albums of all time. And uh, I love these guys so much. They're finishing up. They're, they're I was going to say throwing in the towel, but that doesn't sound too like good. I think they're just like going, hey, this has been a really fun era of our lives. You know, and Alex is the same age as me. And um, they've decided they're finishing up the band. It is, I talked about it with Alex on Mike Talks and I, um, I, he, I said like, and he said, it's like, it's really hard to make money um, with a band these days with touring, recording and et cetera. And um, he's a lawyer as well. Like he's a, he's a, in his day job is being a lawyer. Kind of like how my day job is being like a podcast producer. Um, and then I do creative stuff and make stuff on, on the side. But I guess it's a bit different because law and music is different. Anyway, they're doing their final shows. Um, their final ever show is in Melbourne. Um, and I was like, fuck, I just... I'm going like it's at the end of April and I bought a ticket and I am so excited for it. I haven't been to a concert in a very long time and I'm pretty sure I asked at the start of the show, favorite moments of season two. I'm pretty sure the first ever clip 
I made for this podcast, the first ever like video, like little Instagram clip was a clip about how I don't enjoy live music. I might try and dig it up and put the audio here. So if you hear the audio here, I found it. If not, I didn't, but here it is. If not, let's continue. And, um, but I just thought when I thought about it, I was like, okay, this is a small Australian punk band who are doing their final ever shows and I love their music. And if I don't go to this gig, I will never see them live. I will never get to be like in a, on a sweaty, um, in a sweaty mosh pit, just listening to this punk music that I fucking love. I have a few old friends from school going that I'm going to meet up with, but um, I'm, uh, I'm so excited for this gig. I cannot wait. And um, I just wanted to do a shout out to them. Their music, I, I might talk, I mean, if you listen to that mic talk, so I'll put a plug, it, a plug for it in the plug, but if you listen to it, it is, it is um, you'll hear about how, how awesome I think that music is. And I definitely think you should check their music out. Um, I, I did see Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and I also saw Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore and did YouTube reviews of both of them. Short answer is Sonic the Hedgehog 2, amazingly fun. Fantastic Beasts, still pretty shit. Unfortunately, I think they've just completely not done this franchise well at all. Go watch the video on YouTube. They also, yeah, anyway, so yeah. Um, finally, uh, I got banned from Pokemon Showdown this week. <laughs> Last week, actually. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, Pokemon Showdown is an online Pokemon battle simulator. You just get a random team, you verse people online. It's just something I do when I'm bored. I'll like, play Pokemon Showdown on my computer. And, and I've maintained from the start, Pokemon, I know people laugh it off as a kid's game, but the, the battle mechanics and the battle system of Pokemon are, is actually probably one of the most complex RPG battle systems ever in gaming. It's like, it's like playing chess in 10D. As in like, you know, you might play chess, we play in 3D, and some people will be like, it's like 4D chess. It's like playing chess in 10D, 10 dimensions. Because like, you get Pokemon. Each Pokemon has one or two types that make them weak or strong against different types. They have four moves. They can increase different stats. They have an ability that can change the way they interact with different Pokemon. They also have um, they have uh, held items which can change their strength. And they have like different move sets and you can swap them in and out and different attacks have different priority. It's just a very complex game that you have to think about a lot, which is why I say it's like 10D chess. It, it's awesome. I love Pokemon Showdown so much. And uh, last week I got banned from Pokemon Showdown. <laughs> There's like lots of people who play. It's like the premium place for competitive Pokemon playing, which you'll never, again, these are the conversations you wish you were having. No one on any other podcast in Australia this week is talking about Pokemon Showdown, let alone being banned from Pokemon Showdown, the online Pokemon battle sim. So I was just like, I was playing against, uh, you know, you get, you get battles based on your rank. And I always get up to a certain amount of rank. Like you, you win points for winning and you lose points for losing. I always get up to a similar kind of number and then it gets to a point where the people I'm playing against are just way too good and they start thrashing me and then I start losing points and then, yeah. Um, and then, so this one guy I was playing against, he was demolishing me and he started in the chat just like basically trashing me in the chat being like, you suck, you fucking suck, man. Why would you have done that? You idiot. I can't believe you did that. And then just, just because, because I thought it would be funny, every single reply that I sent, like I would reply to all of his trash talking me. I would just go, come. I just wrote C-U-M, come. And I just press enter. So like this guy's trashing me, essentially bullying me and mocking me in the chat of what I like would have thought would be, you know, a great game full of like people who have a shared interest in this fun, uh, fun game with a complex battle system. And he's just trashing me, not sportsmanlike at all. So instead of being like, oh, I'm so sad, you're making fun of me, I just would reply to everything he said with come. <laughs> and then I finish the battle and I get this notification on my screen and it just goes, you have been banned for seven days. <laughs> reason. And the reason, it must have been human inputted because the reason was being extremely weird in chats. <laughs> so, 
So I've this guy is trashing me in the chat room of a Pokemon battle, like trashing me. I'm replying with come, 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 come. And he reports me to the admins who then ban me for quote, being extremely weird in chat. <laughs> and then I like, and then it was such a deflating moment. Cause I probably have, I've been playing like every day for like an hour. And then I have to just be like, oh, I'm not allowed to, like my IP address is blocked. I'm not allowed to go on Pokemon Showdown anymore because I was just writing cum in the chat. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. Like even starting the, a story in my real life with, hey guys, I got banned from Pokemon Showdown because I kept writing cum in the chat. <laughs> it's like such a weird thing to say, but I did. Now it's like, yeah, it, it was a it was a crazy moment and I just had to tell it in some capacity on this podcast. Um, that's pretty much it for this week, guys. So we'll finish up with this. The plug. The overflow is up now. Hear that story about how I was nearly kidnapped in an Uber a few, or maybe a month ago now. Also, I am going to premiere over on the overflow this week. So Patreon exclusive up front. Patreon exclusive for now. At the end of that episode, I am playing the full studio version of the acoustic Without Me Eminem cover. Full version. I will put a little bit of a tease here so you can hear it and get enticed and be like, I really want to hear all of that now. Kids feeling rebellious, embarrassed, their parents still listen to Elvis. They start feeling like prisoners helpless till someone comes along on a mission and yells, bitch. It will become public eventually. I'm just figuring out how to get it onto Spotify. But very soon, that will come out on Spotify. Um, it's exclusive now on the Patreon, so go get it early now. It'll be at the end of this week's overflow. Um, yeah, and I'm going to try and do a full... This is, you know, I'm going to try and record a full EP, so maybe four or five tracks of Eminem acoustic covers. Um, I'm going to call it Mike, the Michael Mathers EP because Eminem's name is Marshall Mathers. My name is Michael. So I thought Michael Mathers. Yeah. So that should be out. I mean, ideally at the end of the year, I'll do that. Of course, please check out the mic check with Alex Moses. Uh, I'll put a little clip of it here. That was a great chat. Sometimes you just write songs about your life and if other people connect with them, that's so cool. Back then, I guess I was... I was an angrier kid, <laughs> like I was angstier, and I think I was I was going through a hard time. Um, I was in a relationship that was kind of ending, and I think I was also um, in a weird place mentally. I mean, in your early 20s, there's so much confusing stuff going on um, mm -hmm. with like love and relationships, and then like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> and then like, mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff. And um, being in a band doesn't really offer too much security. <laughs> this week is a really busy week for me so I don't know if I'm going to get round to a Harry Potter and the boys but Sammy Garlip joined me last week um, some hilarious moments in that here is a tease of that you're going on dates with girls so Derek have you had head? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the big question when you're Mike, like 14 Mike, or 15 Mike, Mike. these are all yeah I know like <laughs> This is so funny because these are just probably conversations that you've had or overheard <laughs> at school. Um, Derek said Dimmy, somewhat disgusted, but also standing confused. He doesn't know what it is. I'm 11. Of course I've had head. <laughs> And of course, you can head to the YouTube channel where I put thoughts and opinions of different pop culture things, including a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie review, Fantastic Beasts Secrets of Dumbledore movie review, which is also up on the Harry Potter and the Boys feed. Um, and as well as that, I just did a reaction to the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4, which dropped last night. So if you want to hear that, jump on the YouTube, subscribe. Um, the podcast go up there as well. As well as that, there is the Lovable Nerd podcast feed. Link in the description to this podcast wherever you're listening. Lovable Nerd is where I just put um, MP3 rips of all of my YouTube videos. So if you'd prefer to just listen as opposed to watch on YouTube, jump on the Lovable Nerd feed and all of it goes up there. Um, that is more or less everything. Of course, Hamish and Andy. And uh, yeah, that's more or less everything for this week. Guys, awesome week, awesome pod. Love uh, doing this every week. Favorite thing of my week. So yeah, my name's been Radio Bike. This podcast has been the inside of my mind. 
I'll catch you next week. Have a good one. See you on the Overflow Patreons. Love you.